So let's take a moment before we get too invested and go over some of the equipment that we're going to be using today. I've got your uh, standard angle grinder with a cutoff wheel on it. I've also got some uh, sanding pads and a uh, grinding wheel. Uh, a little four, four inch C-clamp. The Amico, it's going to be a, I believe it's 180 amp. Also over here, the rods we're going to be using today, uh, they're going to be 6011 and 330 seconds is going to be the size of that 6011 rod. Uh, the 6011 is supposed to be the all around farm rod. You can do pretty much anything. It'll cut through paint, grease, rust, you name it. Uh, the prep is probably going to be the best thing for you. But um, yeah, it, it, it's 6011 is pretty much cut through whatever it is you're working on. All right, so here's kind of what we're aiming for the end project. We want it to uh, have two pieces of angle mounted here that's going to be stationary. And then this piece of angle welded to this bracket, which is going to move our arms forward and backwards. So anyways, let me get the camera set up and uh, we'll get these first two pieces prepped. Uh, we're going to be using 3 16 uh, steel plate, little, little piece of 3 16 steel. I'm going to take the grinder and uh, just grind down these edges a little bit and get them cleaned up, get them into place and we'll tack weld them. All right, so the first one came out fairly well. I hit it with this flat disc as soon as I was done just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. You know, I'm gonna have to come back with a uh, grinder and just grind up some areas that our angle's gonna be sliding in and out. But let me, uh, let me get the second one uh, on here and we'll get a look at both of them. I think that one came out fairly well. I had a little bit of a frustrating start uh, over here on this back side. I uh, didn't get myself, my body set up correctly uh, in a, like a comfortable position. So I kind of paid for it dearly when I went to make the transition from uh, two hands to one hand. Uh, I was kind of floating around. So I gouged the bottom on this steel and then uh, kind of went a little too high, you know, back and forth, back and forth, way wider than what I was supposed to. So uh, let me get these cleaned up and uh, we'll, we'll get a, a closer look at them. Well, here you have it. We've got the two little plates here welded on. 
see we've got a little valley now in here. These have both been raised up roughly 16th of an, uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. And kind of is like someone who's got an ugly child. Uh, I seem to think that both of my girls are, are beautiful. But uh, you know, some of you out there have some ugly children. They may be ugly, but they are your children. And that's kind of how I feel about these welds right here. They are gonna do the trick, but man, they are ugly. So what I was talking about earlier is some of the grinding that I need to do. This one will probably be okay, but I wanna kinda grind a line and bring some of this back here without cutting into our weld that is still hot. Um, what I did to get some of the spatter that was uh, left over, some of these, uh, you can tell some of this, like all oh, this is smooth now. So I took a, uh, what is this? 80 grit grinding wheel, I'm sorry, 80 grit flapper disc and just kind of clear all that stuff up. What it does is just pretty much take the uh, excess slag and just kind of beautifies uh, what you got. It brings everything to the surface, kind of cleans it up and uh, kind of lets you know what you need to grind down and what you need to fill in to make up for it. But for the most part, I think these things are gonna be perfect. Alrighty, so we got the uh, two pieces of angle iron that I've, I've cut to the width that's needed and uh, I've bent them to the little angle that I want and I've also set up a uh, line back here that I can I can rest them against so that I get an idea that they'll pretty much be in line going off of that that straight line I marked and what I'll do is I'll try to set the uh, magnet up either beside of it or behind it so that when I come in on this side to weld it, I'm not pushing it off the mark or anything. So you'll notice here, um, off camera, I went ahead and ground uh, this little bracket here. This is not the same one, this is a, uh, an extra one I just had laying around uh, for this very reason. So off camera, I went and ground and cut the welds off of the first piece I put here. Uh, I had my amperage a little too high, which is something I've been kind of struggling with here. Uh, trying to get everything as hot as I can to get the penetration I need but also without destroying what we're welding and with how thin this piece of angle is I should have known that I needed to turn it down I still had it set for the 3 16 uh, that we put on here these little plates that we put on and I, I probably should have turned it down a little bit more so um, still learning okay so right here you can see how it just cut right through you know the weld was pretty good down here penetration worked really good but right when I got to the end it just seemed like it uh, it became a torch just started eating that corner so I tried to build up a little bit and then run up to the top to try to connect them and every time I would go high I would just cut another hole into it but anyways we're gonna um, we're gonna throw this pin right here and through here to use it as a guide to help us figure out where 
this needs to line up and we'll get it marked off we'll get it set in place and we'll get it welded up Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next part here. Uh, we've got uh, another piece of angle. It's gonna be inch and a half angle that we're gonna be welding on to this uh, original piece that came with the plow. So I've got it mocked up right now with a four inch C-clamp. And uh, what I've done is just kind of center the angle in between the two pieces of 3 16 that we put, the two 3 16 plates we did originally. Got it kind of mocked up in between it, and then I'm just running it through those two pieces just to see if I'm coming into contact with anything. So even after the cleaning, still really happy with it. Nothing got blown out or ate up on any of these. They're not beautiful. They will do the trick. I think what we're going to do next is get everything lined up and figure out how many holes we're going to cut in this. Um, I'll just I'll start at the very uh, front of it and get it marked out, and then what I'll do is I'll run it all the way to the back and get that marked out. We'll probably have three, maybe four positions we'll put this in. Three will probably uh, suffice. We don't really need to critically get this in a specific angle whenever we do go to use it. It just needs to be um, set either aggressive or straight. That's, that's really the only thing we're looking for. So let me get that done and then we'll break out the...
and this is just kind of a an example of what it's going to look like when we're actually uh, using it on the tractor we're going to have our pin in place here right so that can't that can't come out and then when when this disc gets set down on the ground the arms hold the discs and we're pulling it forward this thing is going to want to go backwards and it's not going to be able to go because that pin is sitting there holding it so uh, right now the angle of the disc would be straight on like if we were doing like how we did with that field next to the house when we planted that uh, just just nice nice straight grooves it just kind of opens up the dirt just a little bit for those seeds to fall in and then if we were actually tilling up like some of these weeds and stuff that we got behind us we'd probably pull that out slide this thing back to the very first hole here and there we go so now we're gonna have a substantial cutting angle on it we've got real nice smooth movement across here nothing really binding up nothing holding us from getting where we need to go so thank you all again very very much for joining us uh, next couple steps are going to be to put a cheap coat of uh, rattle can paint on it that's just going to prevent any of the uh, surface rust that will be forming uh, overnight and uh, if we've got a real nice day tomorrow temperatures aren't too cold and uh, and if it ain't too windy what we'll do is we'll get um, we'll get all the parts sanded back down again real lightly and heavy in the areas that need it and what we'll do is we'll get another coat of primer on there of the gray primer and then we'll be moving on to color uh, we've got to get the discs ordered I've already I've already found those just need to get the order placed again thank you all for joining us uh, really did enjoy this project so far I really like the welding aspect of it can't wait to find another project to get started on with welding um, if you're new to the channel, give us a subscribe. If you're not, thank you all for subscribing. And uh, make sure you hit that like button and stick around for the next video. Take care.